Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com here with American Salon and Stephen Lightfoot. I'm really excited for this interview because you have a lot of things going on. So I want to talk yeah. about those. Sure. Um, you are on the show circuit this yeah. year. So let's just right away tell people if they don't know who you are, your background and where you're at right now in your career. Oh, um, well, to keep it short, uh, oh, cool. so I'm Stephen Lightfoot. I'm a hairdresser. I'm the uh, vice president of product development for Peter Coppola Beauty. I'm also a spokesperson and artistic director for Hattori Hanzo Shears. So I have the luxury of being able to kind of walk both worlds, right, understand yeah. how these products are created, help in that creation process. Um, just do my best now currently to bring the best possible products to the hairdresser. So tell me exactly what that means, because I, I, I did read that that was your, your title within Peter Coppola. So right. uh, when you're working with product development, yeah. um, that's got to be pretty exciting. And yeah. I think a lot of people have a lot of questions about that process. Sure. So tell me as a hairdresser, how do you get involved? How do you become that? How do you well, do? Well, just like, what do you do? What do yeah. in it? So uh, when, a co when a company's trying to create a product, they reach out to people who really understand the business. They want to have people on those development teams that not only are looking out from a company's perspective of how to create something that is sellable and that works, but also truly from a hairdressing perspective. How does this work in a business? Right. Does it really function as a styling product or is it just fluff? Right. And I think the confusion comes with there is a lot of fluff in this business. Yeah. And so um, my path has led me to be um, at least respected by these companies enough to say, hey, a hairdresser really needs this. Would you be willing to make it? And after a few successes in that realm, it's become part of my role. Okay. And how long have you been uh, in the hair industry? So 13 years. I'm a hairdresser first and foremost. I've developed uh, clientele in multiple cities throughout the United States. I started right. in a small town in Spokane, Washington. Nice. And um, I still keep that kind of demeanor. You know, we come from, my brother and I are both hairdressers. We come from a, a pretty unique background with a really cool family. And um, we're first generation hairdressers. And we've given our lives to this craft. And 13 years for me, six years for him. And I think it's the first and last career for both of us. That's very cool. Very yeah. cool. So when did you get started? How old were you when you got started then? So I used to do really terrible haircuts in an apartment complex in a garage with uh, my buddy Chris Griffith, who's a barber out of Spokane, Washington. Okay. And he used to cut our hair with uh, the wall dog clippers you can buy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The yellow box. Right. And um, I asked him if he'd show me how to do that. And at the time, uh, there wasn't a lot of work where we lived and there wasn't a lot of opportunity. So I took it as an opportunity to become a barber to pay for college. Okay. Because that was the aspiration, you know, to right. be smarter, be get out of that. Yeah. And I, there was a chemistry book at my small private hair school in Spokane, and I asked them all, you know, what do you guys need this for? Having that common misconception that hairdressers aren't intelligent people, that right. they don't need that information. And I was, I turned. Yeah, elite. like that moment it was happened. Just that, right. that was the moment for me where everything came together and I knew that this was a path that I could take. Yeah. And I developed a love for female hairdressing and that's paid for every good thing that I've ever had in my life. That's very cool. So yeah. it, it was the same thing with me. I was in, I started school because I actually, when I called the beauty school, I said, do guys do this? Right. I was in Iowa. Totally. And, and they're like, yeah, and they can make great money. I'm like, okay, sign me up. So I went into school with the, the notion that I would just go in, I would work at a salon forever, and like that would be my, you know, that's the job. That's how you work. But then I went to my first hair show and I saw this world. So tell me, so you're in this world. Yes. And yeah. you're bouncing from company to company right sure. now. Your focus is Peter Coppola, of for, course. I'm, I'm guessing, was yeah. kind of the initial. Right. I mean, they, the, the, the thing about the show circuit and what we're, what we're having a conversation about right now is that a lot of hairdressers and what we want to impart upon the new ones is that there's so many different pathways that can evolve from it. Right. And so if you have a love for the craft and you're creating great work for your clients, that to me is the definition of a good hairdresser. Right. But when you start to see the opportunities like the show circuit to be able to find that pathway for you, there's so many options. Oh, yeah. It's, un it's unlimited. Like you can right. get into any facet of whether it's photography, video, right. photo shoots, you know, stage work being a comedian like sure. there's, every, <laughs> there's everything you can think of in yeah. this industry and you also cut hair with it exactly you know? so that's really cool so um all right so peter coppola tell me about the company the brand because i i definitely uh, i'm familiar right. but i'd like to know what's happening now i know you have uh we talked about abs yeah i do want to talk about that because okay. that would be if i had a company um you know skateboarding in and hair at the same time would be my thought process we'll be into, as well be into it yeah so tell me, tell me what you got going on. So, so here's the deal with Peter Coppola. We have this uh, amazing 
opportunity, us as the people who make decisions in that company, to really impart something that we believe in and that we love. And we know that not everybody will love what we do. Right. But we know that we do. So the core values of the company are upheld. Yeah. And I think that integrity and authenticity is what sets us apart and gives us this opportunity. So what that turned into for us is a lot of the people in our brand really gravitated towards specific cultures, um, skateboard culture or barber culture. And that may not be what we sell yeah. or what we do in print, but we love it. Right. So we are given this great opportunity to reach out to all different genres of people, cultures, and businesses, and bring them together. So we're going to bring a skate ramp to ABS. That's awesome. We got, I, a straight up, we got a vert ramp coming to ABS, and we can use that stage to attract attention. That's what a show's about. Well, and that's what people don't understand. Like, So when you go to a hair show, and you guys will see, um, uh, I'm creating a vlog of today as well. Right. But like, when you walk in there, it's yeah. pure chaos. Absolutely. Like, for the most part, hair shows, it's right. everyone blasting their favorite song as loud as, as, loud as they can yeah. to try to trump the other person, right. right? So uh the only way I think that you can grab attention yeah. is either being super quiet but yep. like putting out the best, best hair ever. Yeah, best work. Or bring a vert ramp. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. So we're gonna use that as a catalyst, right? right. Dude, we got and these are people that don't necessarily work for our own brand, but that we're bringing in because we do we like their work. Yeah. And they love what we're doing. Yeah. So we have like Brian Hurston from the Night Owl Barbershop in Toronto. Pope the Barber coming out from L.A. He's one of the most killer female barbers ever. I got Deshanka coming out for our natural hair. So we're bringing all these different elements. So the skate ramp, yeah, of course, it's bringing people to the booth. It gets them there. But we, right. but we have a true belief that if we do the hair that we're the best at, that'll present the best in front of a it crowd. It will, yeah. And well, so you have to deliver that. on the attention. So they, you get them there. Yeah. But then there has to be, you can't just be skateboarding. So you're now. It, well, it better be good hair. Exactly. If you're yeah. coming with skateboarding <laughs> right. and they're like, why am I at this skateboarding right, booth? Yeah. You better have something to back it up. And we brought a team together that we really believe in. And then the education classrooms along with that, we yeah. drive people there for the legitimate education hairstylists crave and deserve. Like what yeah. you're offering to people. Right. It's like, hey, look, here's how you create this. Yeah. Whether you enjoy it, like it or not, I'm showing you a method. Yeah. I'm giving you honest, the honest way that I make this work, and hopefully you can take it to be a better hairdresser yourself. Exactly. It's not about yeah. us. Right. And I really think that our, our brands, so all the brands that I work with, Peter Coppola particularly and, and Hattori Hanzo, want to really give a hairdresser an opportunity. So tell me the thought process of... Um, when you were talking about Peter Coppola being, you're bringing in barbers. Yeah. This is fascinating to me because right. I do, I know Peter Coppola brand and I've never associated it with men's hair. Right. So tell me about that, like how, how you're twisting that in there. So, so the way that we're, we're running it is this. If there's a demand from the hairdressing community to learn how to do something. Yeah. Well, what's hot? Barbering, men's hair, traditional shapes, traditional fades. These are things that are really popular. Whether I offer a product that specifically speaks to that market or not, yeah. I have an obligation to the hairdresser to give them authentic education. So I'm going to bring them. Yeah. And, and are there products that do cater to yes. that? Yes. Yeah. In, in our line, we have the luxury of having a truly formaldehyde-free, like a smoothing system that, that, that works on all hair types. Well, God, you have this traditional fade model that's super popular. Right. And you have X amount of hair types that that actually works on. If I want a pompadour or a slick or a hard part, if I have a very highly textured head of hair, I'm not gonna be able to accomplish that easily. Right. So with our, with our system, you just shampoo them at the bowl if you have one in your shop, hit it with the treatment for 20 minutes and bang, you've given that man the opportunity to wear that look. Right. So we have one skew that really ties into that. But we think, we think overall, is the cosmetology style men's work, right? These are cosmetologists, not all of them are barbers. They do female hair too. Yeah. So if we can hit them where they want the education, then we will be able to then in tow right. give them the products if they would like them. It's the thing I keep trying to tell people every single day is hair is hair. Like whether it's on a man, on a woman, it's all about creating shape. And if you know how, if you know hair, right, then you can cut anything. Dude, I got goosebumps because that's the concept that hard, it's the hardest thing in the world to try to translate. Right. And I'm so fortunate and blessed that companies recognize the soul of a hairdresser, like what it's really about, right, yeah, yeah. that have given me the opportunity. I'm not special. I'm, I stuck by my guns and really believed what you just said. Yeah. And that worked out. People hired me for that. Yeah. And so if you go watch the diversity through texture shoot, what our year is about, the first line in that video is, well, 
all hair is hair. Right. That's and awesome. all hair is yeah. beautiful. Yep. So we, through diversity, through texture, which is a which is a, a, a set that I've created and that I've worked with the team to make, that's what we're about. Yeah. I don't care what you look like, where you come from, Yeah. but let's give you the best possible look we can. And then cool. that's what our company stands for, and we really are doing it. Awesome. And that's hard to do. Yeah, it it's is. It's really cool. And it's, it's few and far between that a company is focused and has a team that is dedicated to to uh, delivering that message, it's you know? I mean, how I how, see these companies, I meet with these companies, right? Yeah. And it's such a struggle because I want to come to a hairdresser and say, "Hey, we're doing this for you," but everything that we've you know seen and we've been taught in the last decade sometimes um, debases the hairdresser's faith in the company. Right. Well, the hair shows that you love to go to, that's based on the company's revenue. Right. And so. We have to find that balance of where we really are catering to our peers and being yeah. honest with them. Yeah. And then also serving that industry that helps us create the education. Yeah. And Coppola is the first place. I've never worked for a wet good company. Right. I've consulted, helped them build products, done things for their business. But I've never worked for one before. And this company has the integrity that makes me stand behind it, like yeah. the only other company I work for. Right. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So, uh, so tell me, I guess, to end the conversation, even though I think we could probably talk for a really long time. The, I would love to. Right. Yeah. The, um, tell me the future, what, what your thoughts are, what, like, where, where's your mind headed? Because uh, I know when you have multiple things going on, you, you know, you have to have a direction. So yeah. what's coming up for you? Personally or as, Personally. A, as a professional? Personally, yeah. Um, there's... Every single time I've ever stood in front of a group of people, I, I recognize the basic fact that I'm not there for myself. I'm there for them. Right. And as my career continues to evolve, it's become more apparent to me that watching the lights turn on for a hairstylist of 40 years and a hairdresser that's one hour out of school right. means more to me now than anything. Yeah. And if I can continue on the path that I'm at, I'll let it evolve naturally because everything in my career from the day I walked into Glendale Academy 13 years ago to today has been because I've been open to the opportunities listen to the people that I respected yeah and I want to hopefully become that person for many others and awesome. that's the goal that is exactly the way that your mind should think in this industry that's the reason that you have the opportunities that you have yeah. it's the reason you know like a lot of people out there just they ask how can I do it how can I do it you yeah. know and that's if you're asking how you can do it, like that's not, you're not in the right mindset. You just do it. Yeah. Like you just go out and you just do it. So awesome, Stephen Lightfoot, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. So uh, very cool. Definitely check out. You have social media. Anything? Yeah, you can find me at Stephen Lightfoot Hair. Um, you can also follow my ice cream blog at Ice Cream Ageden. You have an ice cream blog, dude. <laughs> I, I think I think one of the best one of the best things about us as a community yeah. is that we have things that keep us sharp. Yeah. And some people will use martial arts or some people run or some people lift weights. I cook. Okay. It comes, I think, from maybe that left part of my brain that goes, all right, if I have this much surfactant with this much, you know, other <laughs> right. ingredient, I'm going to get a volumizing shampoo or a smoothing shampoo. Right, yeah. Right. But the baking element, that's what I do when I'm not doing hair. It's the same thing. I'm formulating an idea. Okay. Comes into a batter. Then I cook it, and hopefully it comes out great. That's awesome. <laughs> i got to follow this. What is that one? Yeah, so Ice Cream Ageddon. Okay. It's tough to spell, but it's, yeah. and it's new, but I just Whatever. Yeah, I love, figure it I out. I love to cook. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. And then you can find us at Peter Coppola Hair, of course, yeah. and uh, the Coppola Crews, our hashtag. And, you know, I hope that a lot of people, whatever sees this, you know, whoever sees this, like, we want to impart the one thing that we say to everybody is that the most important thing in your business is the person in the chair at that time. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's social media that you're into or whether you grow your clientele internally, the more people that respect your vision of beauty, the better you'll be. And, uh, that's, that's it. That's all I want to leave people with. So be a part Very of that. Cool. Come and hang out. All right. We'll follow Steven, follow American salon. Thank you to American salon magazine for hooking us up with this table at IBS so we can talk to cool people like Steven. Thanks Dude. so much, man. Anytime, I appreciate man. it. Yeah, Thank you guys for watching. It. We'll see you on the next video. Awesome. Thanks.